okay, Ed, Ed Mortimer, Bromley man, born and bred, enlisted, 1951, the Royal Army Service Corps. I was a driver, but eventually I was, ended up as a full corporal. Not bad for national service man, to get the rank, the dizzy rank of a full corporal. Posted to Aldershot, done me training in Yeovil. The worst place I ever went to was the underground shelter in Goo Street. Transit camp in Goo Street. Hundreds of men down there. If there was ever a fire down there or a disaster, we would never have got out. It's the worst place I've, I've been in the world apart from Egypt. Egypt comes first, where I served in 1951. We was conscripted, we, we was all young men, we come from all over the country. I was with Scott, I was with Scousers, Jocks, Londoners, we was all in one unit, you know what I mean? We didn't know any different. But we had to do it with National Service men, if you're regular, of course, it's your choice. But being National Service, you had no choice. But I enjoyed it. You see, what happens is, when you get selected to go in the army, you're on a square, and there's 500 men there. The, the, you know, the RSM comes along, and the officer goes, all these men turn right, you're going to Germany. All these men turn left, you're going to Korea. All these men from my arm there, you're going to Egypt. That's how it happened. You didn't get selected. do not matter if you was a cook, driver, what you was, you just sent, you know what I mean? I flew to Egypt during the crisis. But I come back by boat, another, another terrifying experience, a troop ship, filthy rotten places. I landed in Egypt, I was there, done my national service till 1953. The king died and I was there, still there, 53 at the coronation. Basically we, the service called Transport Company. We had lorries, Matadors, Atkinsons, big lorries, fire engines, ambulances, water transport, petrol tankers. If anybody in the Middle East wanted a lorry, they'd come to the service called a motor. If uh, the artillery won a, a water tank on a petrol tank of a 50 Bedford lorries, three tonners, six tonners, ten tonners, they come to us and they take them or we go with them. You know, they might say we want drivers as well. So you might go off in a lorry with another unit in the desert. But we couldn't go out alone. You couldn't take one vehicle. Always had to be two vehicles and four men. Like two driving and someone always had to run, ride shotgun with you. You couldn't just go out. You couldn't go into the towns unless it was four or more in a party and one of you had to, drive, uh, had to carry a, a firearm in case, uh, well, for protection. Yeah, we had lots of close schools. Yeah, you get you got vehicles coming along the road, alongside you very fast. We was in lorries and they try and edge you over into the desert or into the canal. Because it's only a tarmac road, the sewer, the, the canal road. It's desert one side, the canal the other. So you can appreciate if someone got alongside you with a lorry or a bus and started edging you, you'd be either in the desert or in the canal. There's a lot of lorries went in the canal, forced over, or they'd come the other way from Cairo to Port Said coming that way against you, they stick a firearm out the window, i.e. a Sten gun, which fires 30, you know, very quick rounds, and they come right down the side of us, firing it, and they're gone. Eventually, we had to, we had to have scout cars to um, patrol the convoy. We were in a big convoy. They'd just come and shoot, or the kids would jump on the lorry, try and, if you had to keep your windows up, you couldn't wind the window down and put your arm on the window so I watched somebody jump on the window and stick a knife in your arm. Well they slashed the canopies of your lorry and they try and get in your lorry to get what goods you were carrying. Or in convoy you don't do 60, 70 mile an hour, you're only doing 20, 25 mile an hour. When you went through a village, they hustle chickens or donkeys in the road, so you'd slow down the first lorry, you'd all slow down about five mile an hour and then they'd be trying to get in the back of your lorry to slash the canopy to chuck out in the desert to their mates anything they could grab what you was carrying, i.e. blankets, petrol, anything we were carrying they was after. Don't matter if it was all shit, they'd pinch it, you know. And we couldn't fire at them, you see. We couldn't say, Sergeant, can we open fire? They just 
run off. And on, on lorries, three ton lorries, they had two petrol cans one side in a cage for a reserve, two cans of water the other side in a cage. They break the bar off, pinch the cans, you could hear them banging, rattling. And if I have been sitting in my cab driving, watching the other lorry being robbed, they snatch in the lorry in front, you blow your hooter, and he'd look in his mirror, but you couldn't stop or get out, you'd have been pounced on. You know, that they come out, they pop up out of the ground, the buggers. That's what they wanted, to get you out of the cab. Once they got you out of the cab, you see you you was a target for them. They're quite handy with a knife, them Arabs. You know, they're quite, they give you that. It never happened to me, but uh, I've had a few jump on the lorry. They'd hang on the side like monkeys and slash the canopy, you know, the canopy that covers the lorry. They'd slash that to try and get in. And, and I've seen them throw stuff in the desert, but you can't go, oi, pack that up. Because, you know, that was their job. They're thieves. It was a hostile country. You never, never knew who the enemy was. They come at night. You got, to, you got, you got, you got to understand. We was in the middle of the desert. We just had barbed wire around us, in a big compound, in tents, and they just come in the desert and started firing into the camps at night. All you could see is the flashes of the when they fired. You didn't know where the bullets were coming, and they was out of range. You know, they used to fire into the camp, but, but they wake us up every night just to harass us. But we was all dotted round the camp. The men in, uh, myself included, either a walking party from A to B, or in a, in a, in a pit with a bring gun. And you couldn't fire until you got permission. Even if you saw them, you had to blow a whistle and then get permission to fire. We only got 28 shillings a week, £1.40. That's not a lot of money. It, we had to buy your toothbrush, your razor blades, your blanco, your blacking and feed yourself in the nap on that money. Could you imagine it? You know, not you couldn't do it, but you could it in them days. They're still rationing on in 51, you know, they're still rationing. I went on a course as an NCO and uh, passed it. So then you get promoted, then you get more money. And I'm now a full NCO and I've got three quid and I'm sending me mum some money home. Mate, I made me mother an allowance. You know, that'd be pay. They stop it out of your pay. You know, you're limited what you can buy when you've only got a certain amount of money. Like now, you can't go and have champagne if you ain't got champagne money, can you? But I was champagne Charlie. I bet I'm getting three, three pounds. You know, and that was a week's wages for men working. I come out in August, 53. That was me two years. Then I've done three years reserve. Well, they called it AER, Army Emergency Reserve. I've done three camps when I was out working. You had to go back and all your gear, do a fortnight basic training just to keep your memory going, you know, and go home. You know, they sent you a rail warrant. You went to wherever you went, they sent for you. You went there, done your training, uh, and left. I've done three years reserve. I think everybody did. It was the common thing then. Oh yeah, I met a lot of men. Yeah, we're still in touch with a lot. I'm still a, I'm still a member of the Sewage Veterans Association. You know, we meet quite regular. This is General Service Medal for the Canal Zone, their own medal, given to the men who served the Canal Zone, obviously, that's the bar. This is the General Service Medal, that colour, everybody gets that. This one is the Egyptian one, which is wasn't given by the government, because I'm wearing it the other side. You only wear them this side if you think them. These, we had made ourselves because we served in Egypt. It's, it's all right, it's the, it's the sewage veteran's own medal. It's good, we enjoy it. We're well looked after. We start very early. You know, we're on most stations, Canary Wharf, anywhere we go, Paddington, Kings, anywhere we go, we're always there by seven, eight o'clock in the morning. We enjoy it, People, we meet the public. People thank us for what we do. Come on and say thanks for what you've done. See your uniform and your medals. One just said to me, thanks a lot. Without you, we wouldn't be here. You know, and I was only National Service, you know what I mean? Well, it means a lot. It's a thank you, isn't it? A thank you means a lot.